Okay, so uh, let me introduce our today's speaker. Uh, this is Dr. Uh, Xi Zheng. Uh, I believe he graduated from uh, Sun Yat-sen uh, University in Guangzhou, and then he did his PhD at Oxford in 2016, spent some time as a postdoc, including a few years at Carnegie Mellon, and then he started uh, working at our university, Melbourne University, in 2019. And I believe he is now I, I, I not doing any teaching because he has got what's called DECRA, which is prestigious fellowship for uh, early career researchers. All right, so the talk will be on expected signature on Riemann manifolds and the geometric applications. So see, please proceed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kostia. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, it is a great pleasure to uh, speak in the Probability Victoria seminar. So my talk today is uh, based on an ongoing joint work with uh, Hao Ni from University College London and um, Chao Rui Wang from University of Bath. So the main mathematical contents uh, <clears throat> related to the talk have been have already been completed. Uh, we are currently um, at the write-up stage for this part, and also uh, trying to push the analysis uh, to the next level to obtain some final results. So my talk today is very much uh, related to a central object of study uh, called a signature transform in rock path theory. So before getting to the actual content of, of my talk, it is quite um, necessary to first uh, introduce um, this concept. So in finite dimensions, um, it is well known that uh, the monomials uh, plays a basic role uh, in the study of um, smooth functions on, 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 on Rn, uh, because any uh, smooth function can be approximated by, um, by polynomial functions, uh, for example, based on the Taylor uh, expansion. Now in stochastic analysis, um, we, we're often interested in extending this uh, simple philosophy uh, uh, to, the, to the context of the so-called path space. For example, uh, we may ask uh, what, what sort of um, Taylor expansion one could write down and what are the natural uh, analogs uh, of the monomials on, on path space. Now, mathematically, um, to, to make the analysis precise, uh, one actually needs to work uh, with the so-called space of rock paths. But in my talk, uh, we're not going to really use any uh, sophisticated rock path theory. So uh, uh, to avoid uh, the, the unnecessary technicalities, one could just pretend that we are working with the space of uh, smooth paths. So on path space, um, one typical type of uh, functions uh, we could consider is for example uh, a smooth function of the of the terminal value of the solution to some uh, differential equation driven by the the generic path uh, w. So here the function maps the maps the driving path into into some some function of of x t. Now, uh, if one uses the um, the Picard iteration uh, at least formally it is not too difficult to write down um, a formal Taylor extension of this uh, function in terms of a, of a series given by uh, multiple uh, directional derivatives of f uh, along the, the, the vector fields uh, in the differential equation. And also, uh, one will see this uh, collection of iterated path integrals along the driving path w arising naturally. So here the superscript uh, i means taking the, the i-th coordinate component of the, of the path w. Now, if one compare this expression um, with the finite dimensional Taylor extension, it is fairly natural to, uh, uh, to view these uh, iterated integrals as uh, some kind of infinite dimensional analog of monomials because you're essentially representing a function as a, as a, as a series of um, uh, derivatives at the starting point and multiplied by, by some um, 
type of uh, polynomial function. So in particular, uh, given, given any multi-index i1 up to i n, one can naturally uh, view this uh, coordinate iterated integral of order n as uh, some kind of uh, degree n monomial uh, on path space. So when the path uh, w is smooth, uh, these iterated integrals are just defined uh, in the usual uh, Lebesgue sense. So this is basically um, uh, the definition of the of the so-called uh, signature of a path. This entire collection of um, of uh, iterated integrals. So let's look at a simple example to to get some uh, intuition. Suppose my path is uh, two-dimensional. So let's say uh, this is my path, my path W, where the uh, where the two uh, coordinate components are indexed by x and y. Now, uh, for the for the degree one uh, iterated integral, which is just the, the the single integral, it contains two components, the dx integral and the and the dy integral. Now, if you integrate this out explicitly, what you get is nothing but just um, the, the total uh, x increment and the y increment. So the, the first level uh, signature component uh, encodes the, in, uh, the, the, the total increment of the path. Now let's look at the, 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 the second level case, which corresponds to a, a double integral. So in this case, uh, uh, the signature component has four uh, has has four uh, components: the dx dx integral, the dy dy, the dx dy integral, and the dy dx integral. Now, for the dx dx integral and the dy dy integral, one could just uh, easily uh, evaluate that explicitly. So that gives the the increment squared over two. It's, now let's look at the, the dx dy and the dy dx component. To get the geometric intuition, it is better to, to, to look at the sum and, and differences. If one looks at the sum of, of these two uh, components, so essentially this is just something like a x dy plus y dx, right? If you integrate out the, 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 first, the, the first bit. So by using the, um, Integration by parts formula. Again, this is this is just uh, the product of the of the x increment and the y increment. So one can see that uh, these three quantities uh, they do not carry extra information from the first level because they are uh, expressed as functions of the of the increment. So the the information is already contained in the in the first level. The extra piece of information. Um, is actually uh, when one look at the difference. So if you if you compute the x dy minus y dx by using the the Green's theorem in calculus, uh, one can geometrically interpret this difference uh, as the signed area enclosed by the by the path and the port connecting the, the endpoints. So this is an extra piece of information that is not contained in 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 degree one. Well. So in this simple example, um, you can see that uh, for the for the iterated integrals up to order two, although it is a six dimensional object, essentially uh, there is only three uh, independent dimensions of uh, freedom. Now, if one moves to a, a higher degree uh, iterated integrals, uh, one obtains a larger and larger list of of, uh, uh, of numbers. And um, usually, uh, uh, we, in order to simplify this object, usually uh, in rock path theory, we, we use the notation of, uh, of something called the, the, the tensor product. So here is the, the definition um, of the signature transform uh, of a path. So suppose W is a, is a, is a smooth path in RB. The signature of W is given by a sequence of uh, quantities, an infinite sequence of quantities. 
for, for some algebraic reason, we, we usually put a scalar one uh, in the first entry, uh, which is actually uh, the zeroth component. This is the just convention. So as before, um, the first component is given by the, the total increment of the path. So this is this is a quantity leaving inside Rd. It's a d-dimensional vector. Now for the second component, it is given by the, the second order iterative integral. So we put a funny uh, tensor product notation here. So this object is a quantity leaving inside a, a space, what we call uh, Rd, the, the, the second tensor power of Rd. It is not important uh, uh, what, what the mathematical definition is. The intuition is that um, this space uh, has dimension uh, d squared. So this, is, this object is a d squared dimensional object. And if you want to extract the, the coordinate components, so if you, if you extract the ith coordinate, uh, on the first bit, and then the jth coordinate on the second bit, uh, what you get is just a, a, a corresponding coordinate uh, iterative integral, which gives you a real number. So there are there are d squared uh, numbers in 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 this uh, encoded in this quantity. So that that that's the 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 uh, the meaning of this of this tensor product. So in general, uh, the nth level component of the signature is defined by the by the uh, nth order iterative integral. Again, we, we simply use the tensor product notation here. So uh, formally, this guy uh, is a quantity leaving in, in, in a space called the nth tensor power of Rd. And the dimension here is uh, d to the n. And the reason is very simple. If you uh, extract coordinate components, so there are there are d possibilities to, to choose for the first bit, and there are d possibilities to choose for the last bit. So so totally, there are d to the n uh, coordinate components one can choose. So usually we use we we just write pi n of S W to denote the the nth component uh, of the signature. And given the multi-index i1 up to i n, the corresponding coefficient is, is the corresponding um, coordinate iterated integral along, along this um, uh, multi-index, which gives you a real number. So there are several uh, important reasons uh, about uh, studying the signature transform. Um, Algebraically, um, there, there's there, there's a very uh, uh, basic algebraic reason uh, which says that polynomial functions on this on the space of signatures are always linear. So this is suggesting that uh, the structure of functions on signature are particularly uh, simple. So by 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 lifting the problem to the signature space, usually one uh, uh, one could trend, uh, one could reduce a nonlinear problem on path space to to a linear problem on the signature space. But there's also uh, another very important reason uh, called uh, the, the the uniqueness theorem, which says that uh, every uh, rock path uh, is uniquely determined by the signature transform uh, up to tree-like equivalence. Uh, so what is a what does tree-like equivalence mean? Um, it means uh, it determines the path up to tree-like pieces. So what is a tree-like piece? So let's say uh, this is my path. So my path is like uh, going along this direction, travels up and reverses back along it to cancel itself and then continue to, to move. So this is, this is called a tree-like piece. So a tree-like piece cannot be detected uh, by the signature because the signature of a tree-like piece is, is zero. So uh, in this sense, uh, a path is, is uniquely determined by, by, the, by the signature. And in the probabilistic context, uh, if one considers uh, uh, stochastic processes, for example, the Brownian motion, um, the signature of Brownian motion becomes something uh, random. So it's, it's a random variable. 
then one could talk about the the uh, the expected value of the signature, which is uh, which is called expected signature. So there is a probabilistic uh, version of the uniqueness theorem, which says that um, under some mild conditions, the law of a stochastic process is uniquely determined by by the expected uh, signature. The mathematical mechanism behind uh, the uniqueness theorem is actually quite deep because the signature itself, by definition, uh, is a global quantity. It is some sort of uh, averaging uh, along the, the, the path. So the uniqueness theorem says that um, the local geometry of the path is uniquely characterized by these global quantities. Now, uh, in recent years, there are uh, uh, some very exciting uh, applications of, of the signature-based method uh, to machine learning. Uh, the basic philosophy is to is to take the signature uh, transform as the basic feature of your of your underlying data stream and and feed it into the machinery of um, of neural network and deep learning. So this proves to be uh, quite uh, effective and, and has a lot of real applications in, in, in recent years. Um, so the, the signature, the uniqueness theorem itself, uh, although it is quite elegant, um, it is a, a qualitative result uh, in the sense that it does not contain any quantitative information about uh, how one can uh, re uh, recover the the, the trajectory uh, from the signature transform. So this gives rise to a very uh, important type of uh, question uh, known as the, the signature inversion problem. So are there any uh, explicit methods for, for reconstructing the path uh, from the signature? So there are several uh, works uh, uh, along this direction, uh, depending on, on, on the type of, of paths under consideration. But in general, um, this, these inversion methods are, are quite complicated methods because the, the nature of the, of the reconstruction problem is essentially uh, infinite dimensional. So normally one cannot expect a very uh, simple uh, algorithm. But on the other hand, uh, we are not always interested in recovering the entire trajectory of the path. And sometimes we are only interested in some particular geometric feature of the path, for example, uh, the length of a smooth path. So along this direction, there is a very neat um, unsolved open problem uh, in, in rock path theory, which is known as the, the length conjecture. Suppose W is a, is, a, is, a, is a continuous path in RD with bounded variation, parameterized at unit speed with length L, now, if one used the, the triangle inequality to estimate the magnitude of the, of the nth order iterated integral, so we, we just move the, the triangle inequality in, inside the, the, the integral and, and use the simple estimate that uh, the magnitude of the differential is just bounded by, by L times dt, right? Because the path is parameterized at, sorry, times dt because the path is parameterized at unit speed. And, and then one immediately uh, uh, gets this simple uh, factorial estimate. So the one over n factorial comes from the integral over the simplex. And if, if you normalize the, the, the inequality by multiplying the n factorial to the other side and take the n through, one obtains this uh, uniform estimate on the, on the normalized uh, signature components. So this is true for all n. Now, what is really deep and, and also highly surprising is that uh, this simple inequality uh, becomes asymptotically sharp as n goes to infinity. So in particular, when one sends n to infinity, uh, it is expected that uh, one obtains the, recovers the length, which is L uh, of, the, of the underlying path. The mechanism behind uh, this kind of behavior is, is actually quite uh, mysterious because uh, if the path is not monotone uh, in, in every direction, we know that there might be some very subtle uh, cancellation over, uh, 
of the increments over different uh, time scales. So there is no a priori reason uh, to expect that uh, this naive uh, triangle inequality uh, uh, becomes asymptotically sharp. There are some uh, uh, progress on, on this problem. So when, when the path has a, a certain amount of regularity, uh, uh, this is known. And um, for the general BV case, uh, uh, the only result uh, so far works uh, works only in the, in the two-dimensional case. And, and, and the general case uh, remains uh, um, unsolved. But my talk today is not uh, uh, about uh, uh, approaching this uh, this conjecture. Uh, what I'm interested in is uh, a quite different type of uh, signature inversion problem. So here is the, the, the basic spirit. Suppose I observe uh, some signature dynamics on a Riemannian manifold. Instead of recovering the trajectory of, of, of my, of my uh, uh, path on the manifold, is it possible to to um, to say something about about the underlying space itself? Is it possible to to recover geometric uh, information of the underlying space? So stated in a very vague form, uh, here is the 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 the, the basic uh, type of main result. Suppose we look at uh, we we run a Brownian bridge uh, on the manifold uh, with from x to y with lifetime t. So this is the Brownian motion um, starting at x, conditional on landing at the location y at, at time t. Uh, the, the main uh, point is that um, the Riemannian distance function uh, of the manifold can actually be recovered uh, from the expected value of the signature for this uh, uh, bridge process uh, through a suitable combination of, of asymptotics when one send uh, lifetime to zero and at the same time uh, send uh, the, the degree of the, of the signature to, to infinity. Now, uh, before uh, making the, the, the statement mathematically uh, more precise, um, it is uh, necessary to first introduce some uh, uh, geometric notation. Suppose we have a smooth path uh, on a differentiable manifold. In order to define the signature, we need to integrate against uh, uh, such a path. So the first question is how do we integrate a path uh, along manifold, uh, on manifold? Now, if you recall uh, your uh, differential geometry class, uh, actually uh, one cannot uh, uh, intrinsically integrate a path on, on a manifold without uh, any extra uh, uh, structure. So in order to integrate along a path, uh, one needs a one form to do so. So what is a one form? So here, uh, a real valued one form is something like a, a function on the manifold, except, for the, except that it is not real valued. So it's an object defined on the manifold, so at every point on, on, the, on the manifold, phi of x is a linear functional on the tangent space at, at that point. So in other words, uh, at every location, phi of x, uh, it's, it's a tangent vector to produce a real number. And by saying it is smooth, uh, we mean that phi x depends smoothly on x. Now, once we have a one form, then we can talk about, uh, we can form the line integral uh, along a path W against the one form. So this is just defined by, by, by this uh, the big integral. Now here, uh, at each time R, W prime R is, uh, is the tangent uh, vector of the path. So it, it is uh, an element in the in the tangent space at WR. Now, because phi is a one form, so it, it it's the tangent vector to produce a real number. So this this, this pairing is the is the is the pairing between between the 
the, the one form and, and the tangent vector. So it produces real number. So that's why uh, uh, one can form such an integral to, to obtain a real number. So here is uh, uh, the, the simplest uh, example. Uh, suppose uh, my manifold is just uh, Rn. Then in this case, uh, a one form is nothing but just uh, a vector of n uh, smooth functions, phi 1 up to phi n. Correspondingly, uh, a vector field on Rn is nothing but just uh, a vector of uh, n smooth functions. So in that case, uh, the pairing between the between one form and the vector field is just uh, the usual um, uh, Euclidean inner product. There is a, a, a special type of one form called uh, an exact form, which comes from a smooth function uh, on the manifold. So suppose f is a smooth function, then uh, this notation df is the one form defined by, uh, by, the, by the total differential of, of f. So if my manifold is Rn, then this one form is, is nothing but just the vector defined by the, by the first order uh, partial derivative of f. OK, so now we can uh, introduce the concept of, uh, of the so-called uh, phi signature of paths on, on the manifold. But we need to uh, slightly extend the previous discussion to uh, vector valued one forms. So from now on, we always assume that uh, we are given the following two pieces of information. The first one is a differentiable manifold. The other one is a, is a, is a vector valued one form. So it's a one form taking values in, in some uh, given fixed Euclid, uh, vector space Rn. We just call that E. So what is a vector value one form? Um, so for at every x, at every location on the manifold, phi x is, a, instead of a, a, a real valued a linear functional on the tangent space, now it is just a Rn valued. So that's what we mean by, by a vector value one form. So it, it's a tangent vector to produce um, uh, a vector in, in Rn. Equivalently, one could also think of it as a, as a collection of n uh, real valued one forms. Okay, so here is the definition of the, of the phi signature of a path on the manifold. So suppose W is a, is a path on the manifold. By, by, uh, because we are given uh, uh, an E value one form, so we can form uh, the, the corresponding uh, line integral. So as a function of little s, this gives us um, an E valued path. Uh, a vector valued path. And then we, we, we take the, the usual uh, signature of this path in, uh, over this uh, vector space E. So that's called uh, the, the, the phi signature uh, of, of W. So in particular, uh, as we just saw before, uh, the nth component of the, of the phi signature is a, is a degree m tensor uh, over e. So it has dimension uh, n to the n. So in my talk, uh, <clears throat> my, my underlying path it will either be smooth or, or the Brownian motion or, or the so-called Brownian bridge. So here is here are some uh, basic examples. For example, uh, if m is, is Rn, and phi is the, the canonical uh, coordinate forms, then uh, the phi signature is nothing but just the, the usual uh, Euclidean signature. And more generally, if we assume that phi uh, comes from some embedding of, of my manifold into some ambient space Rn, then uh, it, it is easy to see that uh, the line integral in this case is, uh, is nothing but just the image of my path uh, under this uh, embedding. So in this case, the phi signature 
is again the, the usual uh, signature, but computed using the, the extrinsic coordinates in, in the Euclidean space. Now, sometimes uh, if, if one chooses the one form properly, there might be some geometric uh, interpretation of the, of the corresponding line integral. For example, uh, on the torus, if, if one chooses a pair of one forms coming from the, the two generators of the, of the first order Dirac cohomology here. So intuitively, this corresponds to the, to the two uh, independent uh, loops on, on, the, on the torus then the line integral would uh, describe uh, the winding of, of the path with respect to uh, uh, each of these two loops. Okay, so, uh, so my talk is very much uh, about uh, the Brownian dynamics, uh, the signature of the Brownian dynamics. Uh, so, uh, in order to 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 uh, to introduce the Brownian dynamics, one needs some uh, uh, geometric assumption on on the on the underlying uh, manifold. And typically, uh, uh, we just work with a, a Riemannian uh, manifold. So here is so let's quickly recall some uh, some background from from Riemannian geometry. Suppose M uh, is a differentiable manifold. So what is a what is a Riemannian metric? A Riemannian metric uh, is a smooth assignment of an inner product stru structure on each uh, tangent space at every point, so that one can one can measure the length of of the tangent vector at every uh, point on, on the on the space. Now, once we have the notion of uh, length of the tangent vector, then we can naturally uh, talk about the length of a smooth curve. So more precisely, uh, the length of a smooth curve is just the integral of the, uh, of the length of the tangent vector uh, along, along the path. Now, uh, one, once we know how to calculate the length of the curve, uh, then there is a, a, a very, uh, important concept called uh, geodesics. So these are locally uh, length minimizing uh, curves. And then we can define um, the so-called uh, Riemannian distance function. So given two points uh, on, the, on the manifold, the Riemannian distance uh, of the two points is just uh, the, the, the smallest, the shortest length uh, of uh, smooth paths connecting uh, X and Y. So for example, if one uh, consider the unit sphere, uh, let, let, let's say, uh, let's look at the, the, the South Pole and, and, and the North Pole. So geodesics connecting uh, the two poles uh, are given by the, the semi-gray circle arcs, the, the, the longitude curves. So in that case, uh, there, are, there might not be a unique uh, minimizing geodesic. There might be more than one uh, minimizing geodesic. And the, and the Riemannian distance uh, between these two points is, um, it, it is the length, is the spherical length of, of the um, uh, semi-gray circle arc, which is, which is pi, I think. OK. <clears throat> Now, uh, to introduce uh, the Brownian dynamics on the, on the Riemannian manifold, uh, a simple way to do so is to, uh, it, it's through the generator from the, from the Markov perspective. So on the Riemannian manifold, uh, there is a canonical differential operator called uh, the Laplace Beltrami operator, which is, uh, uh, an extension of the of the Laplacian in Euclidean space. So here is uh, one way to to look at it. Suppose so. Let let's say uh, M is isometrically embedded in some uh, ambient uh, Euclidean space. So let E one up to E n be the canonical basis of my uh, ambient space. 
Now for each I, let's define VI to be the vector field on, on the manifold by orthogonally projecting the, uh, the I basis vector onto the, on, onto the tangent space at X. So if, if you do that at every point on the manifold, you obtain a, a vector field on, on the manifold. But we know that uh, a vector field can be regarded as a differential operator acting on functions right, by, by taking directional derivative along, along the, the, uh, the, the vector field. So um, using this viewpoint, uh, one could uh, define uh, the, the, the so-called Laplace Beltrami operator uh, in, in, in this way, which is the sum of the of the v uh, of vi squared f, where each vi uh, is viewed as a as a differential operator uh, by taking directional derivatives uh, of functions on m. But of course, in, in many uh, uh, Riemannian geometry texts, uh, this is not uh, defined in this way. I just find uh, maybe it's it's easier to to explain in this uh, using this uh, extrinsic uh, perspective. Okay. Now, what is the Brownian notion on, on the manifold? It is nothing but just the, the Markov process uh, generated by, by half of the, the Laplacian. And one can show that uh, it has a smooth uh, transition density function, uh, PTXY. <clears throat> so this is like um, uh, the, the probability density that uh, if you start your Brownian motion at X, you find it at at location y at time t. Um, the importance of this uh, transition density uh, also lies in the fact that uh, this is uh, also the so-called uh, fundamental solution uh, to the to the heat equation. And the uh, the study so this is uh, also called uh, the heat kernel in in the geometric uh, analysis uh, community. Uh, so basically, one could also uh, interpret uh, the, the heat kernel as uh, the temperature uh, at time t at location y. If one, uh, uh, if we, if there is a heat source uh, at at location x uh, at at the starting time. Okay. Uh, so this is the. Um, uh, the, the, the first type of uh, result uh, one could uh, we, we could establish uh, about a, a description of the of the signature dynamics of the uh, of the Brownian motion. So suppose M is is a compact Riemannian manifold to make life easy. Um, let phi be be some uh, smooth one form. Then so we 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 consider the uh, the phi signature. Of the of the Brownian motion, and because now it is it is a random object, so we take the expectation. Then one can uh, uh, we can we can uh, establish uh, an intrinsic uh, PDE on the manifold, uh, describing the the evolution of of this function. So here, uh, the the leading the leading part is is also uh, uh, described by the by the by the Laplacian. And uh, the geometry uh, uh, interact with the one form, with the given one form phi in, uh, through this term, because uh, this guy is, is actually the, what we call the, the, the covariant derivative uh, uh, of the one form, which, which uh, only makes sense uh, 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 with, 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 uh, some, uh, with a given uh, well-defined uh, connection on the, on the manifold induced by, by the Riemannian metric. Okay, um, so we are interested in, 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 the, in, in the signature inversion problem. So we want to understand how the signature dynamics uh, encode uh, geometric information of the underlying space. So, uh, there is a very uh, elegant uh, Result, a uh, classical result uh, proved by by Varadhan in, in the in the sixties. So recall that uh, in Euclidean space, the the heat kernel has has a very uh, explicit shape given by the the Gaussian function. 
right? So in this formula, if you take the logarithm of the of the heat kernel multiplied by multiplied by t, and and send t to zero, you look at the small time uh, asymptotics. This polynomial factor uh, is gone because of the logarithm. So one can actually recover um, the Euclidean distance uh, from 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 the small time asymptotics. Right? And of course, the remarkable point is that uh, this, this elegant uh, formula uh, remains valid on a general uh, Riemannian manifold. So by, by, by taking the logarith, by, by taking this uh, small time asymptotics, one can actually recover the, the Riemannian distance function. Uh, so this, uh, in some sense, uh, this provides a, a kind of um, probabilistic uh, uh, method of, of reconstructing the Riemannian distance function because one could uh, simulate uh, the, um, the heat kernel by simulating uh, Brownian trajectories. So this method, I think uh, uh, it has uh, a lot of um, applications in, in machine learning, in particular in, in computer graphics when, when people try to learn the, the shape of, uh, of a surface. So in, inspired by, um, by this um, uh, asymptotic result, in order to reconstruct the Riemannian distance function, um, it is quite natural to, uh, to look at uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the so-called Brownian bridge process. So this is, um, here's the definition. So the Brownian bridge from, from X to Y with lifetime T is the Brownian motion starting at X, but conditional on uh, landing at location Y uh, at time T. So here, uh, X, Y, T, are, uh, uh, you can think of them as parameters, and, and the time variable is, is uh, S. So it is a simple exercise to um, to write down the transition density of of the of the Brownian bridge uh, in terms of the heat kernel, and also to figure out the, the its generator, which is a Laplacian uh, plus some uh, uh, drift term. So it is uh, also a Markov process. Now, now we introduce this. Uh, uh, Expected signature function. So, given the, the the Brownian bridge with lifetime t, we compute the uh, the phi, its phi signature and then uh, take its expectation by using the um, the PDE for the for the expected signature of Brownian motion and also the heat equation uh, for the heat kernel. It is fairly um, uh, it is not too difficult uh, to to write down the corresponding PDE for the for this uh, uh, expected signature function uh, for the for the Brownian bridge, uh, the the interesting point is that uh, there are some uh, useful geometric information encoded in the asymptotics uh, when one sends the lifetime uh, to zero. So here is the 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 basic idea about uh, how one can uh, reconstruct the Riemannian distance function from the signature dynamics. So let's assume that uh, my, my one form phi comes from some isometric embedding of my manifold into, into some ambient uh, Euclidean space. Now, the, the, the main observation is that uh, when the lifetime is small, my Brownian bridge looks uh, more and more like a geodesic uh, connecting X and Y. The reason is very simple. If lifetime is very small, by the definition of Brownian bridge, you are actually uh, requiring your, your process to go from X to Y within a very small amount of time. So this forces your process to, to travel more and more like a geodesic. And uh, because of this type of approximation, it is natural to expect that uh, from some sort of continuity property, 
uh, it is natural to expect that the expected phi signature of my Brownian bridge will also be close to the corresponding phi signature of the, of the geodesic, which is nothing but just the, the signature computed using the, the extrinsic coordinates. Uh, but I, I should point out that uh, this step is actually uh, uh, not straightforward because there is no such type of uh, continuity theorem. It is well known that um, um, the iterated integral as a, as a function of the driving path is not uh, continuous with respect to the, the uniform topology. Okay. Now, on the other hand, uh, we know from the, from the length conjecture how 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 to recover the length of the geodesic from the from the signature, right? You normalize the signature by n factorial, and and then you take the the n root. So, but we but because we assume that uh, f is an isometric embedding, so the length of the geodesic computed uh, in the in in R n is the same as the, the intrinsic uh, length uh, on, on the manifold, which is, which is just the, the Riemannian distance, because gamma is a geodesic. So in this way, um, one is then able to, to, to reconstruct the, the Riemannian distance function. So to summarize, uh, if one takes the, the expected phi signature, the nth level of the expected phi signature, normalize it according to, to, the, to the length conjecture. And, and in, in, in a combination of, um, of small time and, and, and large degree of syntotics, one is able to uh, recover the, the Riemannian uh, distance function. Well, actually, uh, a remarkable point is that um, it is actually possible to combine uh, these two uh, asymptotic procedure into one uh, uh, single limit. So more specifically, for each fixed n, it is possible to figure out um, uh, a corresponding time scale Tn uh, such that uh, the normalized uh, signature uh, converges to the, to, the, to the Riemannian distance function. So here is the, um, the, the main result uh, we have. Suppose M is a, is a compact uh, Riemannian manifold with injective radius rho. So basically this implies that uh, for any two points whose distance is less than rho, uh, one can connect them by a, by a unique uh, geodesic. Suppose F is an isometric embedding then uh, for any two points uh, uh, on the manifold whose distance is smaller than, than the injective radius, um, there exist geometric constants, C and epsilon, depending on, on X and Y and also uh, uh, the underlying space, such that um, for every fixed N, if one computes the, the, the nth degree phi signature, of the Brownian bridge, but with lifetime uh, of order one over n to the sixth, then in the normalized asymptotics, uh, it, it um, approximates the Riemannian distance function um, with accuracy uh, one over n. So in particular, uh, one has uh, this, uh, this type of um, uh, asymptotics formula. Uh, so there are some uh, further questions. Uh, for example, uh, what happens if 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 y uh, is on the cut locus of x? Uh, so basically, uh, if you think about the, the 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 unit sphere, if x is the south pole and y is the north pole, happen to be north pole, then there are more than one uh, uh, minimizing geodesic connecting connecting the two points. So in that case, the current analysis uh, uh, does not quite work. We we sort of believe that uh, the, the the same type of result should should be true, but um, um, it it is it it might be technically more challenging. 
Another type of question uh, one could ask, which is also quite interesting, is that um, so so far we are only considering the small time uh, asymptotics uh, to in order to recover the, the Riemannian distance function. Now, if one uh, looks into the small time expansion instead of instead of just the first order asymptotics, is it possible to um, to recover uh, interesting curvature properties uh, from from the, uh, the coefficients of the of the expansion? Because so far the current formulations. Uh, is is extrinsic uh, in the sense that we're computing signature from the extrinsic coordinates. So it it might be interesting to see whether such expansion might encode uh, uh, extrinsic curvature properties, which describes how the how the surface is uh, curved inside the ambient uh, Euclidean space. This is normally uh, described by the so-called uh, second fundamental form. Another question is whether uh, there would be some uh, real applications in, in machine learning, uh, uh, for example, in, in, in computer graphics. So the current methodology has a, has a similar nature to the, to the Varadhana symbolics. But instead of uh, simulating the heat kernel, one could uh, simulate Brownian bridges and compute the, the, uh, the uh, Expected uh, computer the expected signature. So this might provide a kind of Monte Carlo uh, method uh, to 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 learn the shape of, of an unknown surface. Um, yeah. So time uh, is running much faster than I expect. So I I think uh, it's a good point to to stop. And and these are some uh, references uh, related to the. Um, to to the to the uh, signature problem, the uniqueness theorem, and also uh, the the length conjecture. And I think I, I will just stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your talk. I really interesting. Are there any questions, please? Yeah, maybe when people are just thinking about possible questions, I will ask a couple of uh, possibly stupid uh, ones. One is about uh, implementation. Is it feasible to implement uh, this procedure in some sense? Uh, <clears throat> compute the signature, expected signature. How yeah, compute. There, there are very uh, effective uh, tools for for uh, for computing the signature of a path, I think uh, people in the in the applied um, uh, signature community are developing lots of um, of uh, um, um, uh, packages for, for computing that. Uh, but for for simulation of the of the Brownian bridge, uh, I haven't uh, really thought about that uh, seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I have to admit that I, I can't comment too much on the uh, on the very uh, practical side in terms of the, uh, uh, for example, the the computational complexity. Because uh, I mean, at this point, uh, it, my my interest is is more like uh, is is more on 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 the theoretical side. I I was trying to see how. How the signature dynamics is related to to geometric properties of, of the underlying space. So I, I'm I'm more interested in in the in the underlying uh, mathematical structure. But I haven't really uh, um, seriously think about the how how to implement this. Uh, maybe it's a good project for uh, for uh, for a PhD student in data science. Okay, then another quick question uh, from uh, the large deviations viewpoint. It's quite natural that. As uh, you let the time uh, shrink to zero for your trajectory of the Brownian bridge, then indeed uh, it will just go along the geodesic. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's just the only uh, feasible uh, scenario. However, what happens if you don't uh, let the time tend to zero, but instead uh, you, for, for example, your manifold is embedded in Euclidean space and you look uh, at a given point x, and then at the points which are obtained by cutting your manifold by the sphere of a fixed radius, and you look at expected signature for all these uh, paths, 
you know, connecting uh, your fixed point X with the points on this cut. Is it possible to infer anything about the uh, geometry of the manifold from uh, this type of information? Um, <clears throat> sorry, so you, you're trying to, uh, are you trying to look at uh, the Brownian motion uh, stopped at, at the boundaries of, of your- Or maybe Brownian bridge, once again, you fix time, say one, time is one, and you look at all the Brownian bridges where one end point is fixed at your point X, and uh, the end, uh, the so other end point, on um, on on reaching the the the, the, the boundary of your of your yeah lead. all these points which you obtain by cutting your manifold by the sphere say of radius whatever epsilon mm. is it possible to infer anything by uh, say letting um, epsilon to zero? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I would expect that uh, you might probably. Um, want to look at the uh the asymptotics when you send the neighborhood of your of your uh yeah when you send send the radius of, of your neighborhood to zero maybe that would uh pick up some um in, in the asymptotic expansion that might pick up some curvature coefficient at at, at your at, at the point x yeah but if you don't look at this uh uh Asymptotics. If you just fix a neighborhood, um, I'm I'm not so sure. Okay, uh, just you know a wild idea. Okay, maybe any further questions? Okay. If there are no further questions, see. Thank you very much for your talk again. And Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Let me wish everybody good evening or morning, depending on the time of. Okay, see you. All right. Thank you. See you. Bye. See you. See ya.